So we've talked about measuring Australia's progress and the genuine progress indicator, or the GPI, as alternative measures to GDP as a measure of our living standards. But perhaps the most well known of these alternative measures to GDP is the United Nations Human Development Index, or the HDI. So this is developed by the United Nations, or recorded by the United Nations, and is called the Human Development Index. And we'll commonly refer to as the HDI. So this is another measure of the level of living standards in a country rather than the change and is used for international comparison. So unlike GDP, which is only one nation, this is used for international comparisons of living standards. I'm just going to denote that LS. So what the Human Development Index uses is that it brings together an index number um, using three different aspects of living standards. So unlike Measure Australia's progress, progress, it doesn't use a series of different measures, but it uses an index number. And this is formed by three different measures. So firstly we have the gross national income or the GNI. And this is different from GDP because it takes into account the national income rather than the domestic national or national product. And so for example the difference lies in the fact that if a country is heavily indebted and they have interest payments owed to another country, this will result in a decrease in gross national income but it would mean a no change in GDP. So gross national income takes into consideration of all the interest and all the income available to a country. And this may be particularly important for the poorer nations. Secondly, we have the average life expectancy. Of a country. Now this is a reflection of, say, their diet, their health, and possibly their non-material living standards. And lastly, the Human Development Index uses educational attainment measured by means of, you know, how many, how many years of schooling for adults they have and the expected years of schooling for children of school entering age. And this measure is important because since it also relates to the political situation in the nation, so democratic values and freedom, so it relates to political situations, democratic freedom. It also encompasses all of the other non-material aspects of living standards uh, that uh, were prevalent in the in measuring Australia's progress. And so these data are provided for each of the three indicators and are then combined into an indice. So we have GNI, the average life expectancy and educational attainment all combined into a single index between 0, 0.0 and 1.0. So at the moment we have Norway at the highest G or HDI, Human Development Index. So Norway is the highest, and I think it's around 0.95. And Australia is a close second, also around the 0.95 area. And so this is very important because it provides an alternative measure to GDP. It also combines 
So we have the positive effects, and we also combine the negative effects as well. And the negative effects include, say, infant mortality levels, the prevalence of uh, rise or using child labor, so negative effects as well. So, say, mortality level, mortality rates, and child labor. And this all encompasses the non-material aspects of our living standards. So like any other measure that we've talked about before, the Human Development Index also has a weakness. And the weakness includes the subjective nature of the indicators used to compile the index in the first place, and the unreliability of the statistical data for some countries. So as we know that some countries may not be as politically free as Australia, or democratic as Australia, therefore the information, so the weaknesses, the information may be subjective and also unreliable. I'll put this in red. So these are the two major weaknesses um, surrounding the Human Development Index: is that it is subjective. So why should we only use GNI, the average life expectancy, and educational attainment as being the positive effects of the, three, of the country? and as well as the negative effects being the mortality rate of child labor. Why don't we use any other, um, any other different um, subjective measures to, to, to frame, to an extent, the, the Human Development Index? And also because it is subjective, and also because it is unreliable in some cases, because if you go to, say, a war-torn country in Africa, they're not going to give you a reliable indicator of what their actual living standards are. They're going to overstate it, and they have agency issues to overstate their living standards. So that comes back to another, another weakness of using the Human Development Index here as an international comparison of living standards. But it is also an alternative to GDP, and it does sort of um, overcome some of the weaknesses the GDP uh, exhibits at the moment, such as the the non-inclusion of our non-material living standards in GDP. So the Human Development Index, another alternative measure to GDP to measure our living standards.